Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make this cute little spinner card. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm grabbing the largest die here. These are from the Art Impressions Rectangle A2 Double Stitch Dies. And I'm going to be die cutting that from some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine two times. So we'll have two of these panels. Now let's grab one of the panels that we die cut. Go ahead and do the background here. So I'm starting off with squeezed lemonade. This is the Distress Oxide ink from Tim Holtz. And I'm using my foam applicator tool. Now I want to create the moon where my little bat is going to be. So I want to start with a circle right in the center there. So I'm just putting the foam applicator down onto the paper and then twisting it back and forth and then just spreading that ink out a little bit more. Now I'll take my ripe persimmon ink pad and I'm going to go around the edges of this squeezed lemonade. Just kind of bring that color, those two colors together a little bit. But I'm not going to do any blending here yet. I'm just simply going to lay down the ripe persimmon. So now I'll go back and do some blending with the squeezed lemonade and I'm just going to blend right into that ripe persimmon color. So the next color we're using is aged mahogany and this is a beautiful color. This is going to really give us kind of that spookier night sky. So I'm going to bring that up into the ripe persimmon a little bit here. Again, not doing a lot of blending, just kind of applying a nice coating of this color down. And I think these colors blend together so beautifully. So now we'll go back to the ripe persimmon applicator and then back to the squeezed lemonade. So I do find the more blending you do with these, the, the better look that you're going to get. So just take a little time to do your blending. And then for my final color, I'm using black soot. And again, that's just going to give us that night sky. So I'm going to add some shadows around the edges down towards the bottom here. We are going to have a little bit of a border at the bottom, so I don't need to worry about uh, about an inch up from the bottom is where I want to start applying my colors. So I'm going to, again, add that shadow all the way around here. And then again, I'm going to start blending that out a little bit. So I've gone back to my squeezed lemonade there and I'm just blending that color in. And you can see how beautiful this is. You get that really bright sky in the background there. So now I've got the second panel that we die cut. And I just need about one inch of this. This is that little border at the bottom that I was talking about earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. And that will give us that continuous stitched edge along the sides and the bottom. So now using my black soot and hickory smoke, I'm going to create the grassy area. So I'm going to start off with that hickory smoke and I'm going to place that all over this little panel. And then I'll go to the black soot just to add some shadows here. And in this case, I want the shadows to be down along the bottom edge of my little grassy area here. And again, this is for our night sky, so we're going to create a dark grassy area. Now I'll just go back to the hickory smoke and blend that out a little bit. So now for stamps, I'm using this set here. We're going to be using just the pumpkins, although there are these cute little mice popping out of the top. We're going to just use the pumpkins. And this creates a pumpkin flip card, but we're not going to be doing that today. Again, we're going to use this a little differently. So this is the pumpkin mice flip card set. And if you do want to create the flip card, that die that creates the flip is sold separately. So again, those in instructions are right on the packaging. So the next set we're going to be using is this one here. We're going to grab that little bat 
And we're going to grab that sentiment later on that says, have a fabulous Halloween. And this is from the Halloween Critters set. So to do my stamping, I'm using the VersaFine Onyx Black Permanent Ink. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that row of pumpkins and that little bat. Now I do want to stamp two of the little bats and that'll be to create the spinner element on our card. So for marker colors, I'm using black, mid-brown, dark oatmeal, orange, and light brown. So I'm just going to kind of mix these colors here just to get different shades of the pumpkin. So I'm going to start off here with the orange and I'm going to create most of the shadowing down at the bottom of these pumpkins. So I'll put color there first and then I'll start to pull that color up into these pumpkins. And again, I'm just going to give them a little more shading at the bottom. Again, we're creating a nighttime scene. So I want them to look kind of spooky and a little bit darker than you would normally color them in. Now, if you love that little bat, I posted up above here a video that I did using the, the little Halloween critters. And so you can check that out if you want to. On that card, I did this uh, really sparkly glimmer paste in purple to create a spider web. And then I've got three of the cute little critters on there as well. So again, I've got that listed up above and I'll link that down below and on my blog as well. So you can check that out if you want to. So here I added some black to his mouth and a little black to the eyes. And now I'm gonna go to this next little pumpkin. Again, just mixing up my colors a little bit here. So for this one, I'm starting with the light brown. So I'm going to do the same thing just to pull that color up towards the top here. And then at the very end, I'm gonna show you a really easy, kind of a, a simple little trick to add a little bit more shading very easily. So I'll show you that when we're done coloring these in. So now I'm coming in and adding a little bit of a darker shadow here down along the bottom again, just like I did on the other one. And for this one, I'm using the dark oatmeal to do my shadowing. Here I'll come in with a little bit of the mid-brown. And to clean off your blender pen, you just scribble it onto your scrap paper until it goes clear. And once it's clear, you know you're good to change to the next color. So I added a little orange to that pumpkin's eyes and a little bit of black as well. And now I've got the platinum brown and I'm gonna add some little shadows here and there. So again, just switching up the colors here and there. Now I'm going back to the orange. And I'll do some shadowing with that mid-brown. And for the stems, I'm gonna use that mid green. Just add a little green and then I'll add some shadowing to that as well. And I'm sort of trying to match up the tops of the pumpkins to the pumpkins themselves. And then I'll just go ahead and do this last one here. And these were really fun to color in. This would be kind of cute too if you mask off the pumpkins and just do a whole row of them. You could stamp it again two or three times for a slimline card. That would be really cute as well. 
So try to look at your stamps in a different way. That's usually what I try to do is I'll look at them a little bit differently, see what I can do to make them look different because um, I like to use my stamp sets over and over again and I always want them to look a little bit different. So have some fun with these. Just going in with a little bit more black there. And now that we have those colored in, I'm going to go ahead and do the bats. And I'm using that black. I'm placing a little bit of color down at the bottom here of the wings or the tips of the wings and then kind of pulling that up. Just keeping the tops of the wings the lightest there. Now, although these bats aren't perfectly symmetrical, Typically when you're do creating a spinner card, you do want your two items to be symmetrical, but they're very close. So this is going to work out just fine. And I'll show you that here in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is die cut the little bats because that set does come with a die that coordinates with that. But for the pumpkin, since I'm not using the little uh, mice up at the top, we're gonna go ahead and cut those out by hand. So I'm just using some detail scissors and I'm going to follow those lines exactly. And this really wasn't that hard to do. It went pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting that out. And here I wanted to show you that I'm just cutting away the little mice that are inside the pumpkins. And they very easily just cut away so you'll never even know that they were there. So now I can go ahead and run the little bats through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. And I went ahead and die cut both of those. So here's my little tip for adding a little shadow, nighttime shadow here. I'm taking the black uh, Distress Oxide ink on my foam applicator just a little tiny bit and I'm just going all the way around the edges of that. Now you could use a black marker there as well, but I wanted to bring it the color down a little bit and create a little bit more of a shadow there. So the next stamps we want to grab are quite a few from this little set here. This is the Art Impressions Bible Journaling Collection. And this set is called Bible Foliage Set. And then from this set here, also from the Art Impressions Bible Journaling Collection, this is called the He Leads Me Set. So now I've also got my watercolor travel box. And in this little box from Art Impressions, you get three little acrylic blocks, and you also get that watercolor palette as well, and the little box that holds all of these, which I really love because it keeps it, I keep it right on my desk so it's really easy to get to. So now I'm gonna grab the tree from that one set there, and again, I'm going back to the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm gonna do some stamping here. So I just wanna figure out about where I want these little trees. Now, these little trees can be way in the background or they can be like little shrubs here. So whatever way you wanna think of it. But I'm just going to kind of place these randomly, just a few here and there, because we are gonna fill in with some other little branches here in a minute. So once I have that all set, I'm going to go and grab another tree from the other set there. And now we'll start to fill in a little bit and I'm just checking on some scrap paper just to make sure that my stamping looks good before I go to my cardstock. So I'm just kind of filling in here. I want these at different heights and I want it to look like they go off the paper as well. So now I'm gonna grab this little branch and I'm going to kind of fill in down here at the bottom a little bit. And now for my little grassy border, I'm going to take the grass from that set and I'm just going to stamp some little grassy areas on this border. And I thought this looked really fun. This was really, just really added a lot to this little border, I thought. 
So play around with these little foliage sets. You don't have to use them the same way all the time. You can just kind of have fun with these. And then I took that smaller one and I'm just going to fill in a little bit here. So you do get two sizes there. So you can see that up close. So now I've got a piece of cardstock that measures five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm scoring that at four and a quarter. And I'll go ahead and press that out with my bone folder. So this will be a standard A2 size card. Now I'm gonna grab this circle die here. This is the fifth largest circle die, and that's from the circle double stitch dies. And that's going to be our moon, and it's also going to create the opening for our spinner. So now I want to just, I'm just kind of seeing how that panel is going to lay on the card. So I want to cut out the brightest spot here that we created for our little moon. So I'm going to go ahead and tape that circle down with a little bit of purple tape. And I've put some scrap paper over the top of that as I ran it through, just so that it stays protected as it runs through the die cutting machine. So we're, we are going to save that little circle. And then this panel, we're going to die cut that circle so that it goes all the way through. I just thought it'd be easier to die cut these one at a time. Now you certainly can run this through all at once if you prefer, but I'm just going to now tape that panel down because I am using 100 pound cardstock, so I wasn't sure it would go through both pieces. So what you can do now is just pop that right back into place it's like a little puzzle. It'll fit right down in there and you can tape this down with your purple tape and then run that through the die cutting machine again. Again, I'm just putting some scrap paper on top of that just to protect it. And now you can see that we have that circle pattern all the way through. So I can remove this panel and remove my purple tape here. And that little circle will, will, will go right back in there. That'll go on the inside of our card. So I've got my We Are Memory Keepers silicone mat here. And I'm going to take some mica spray. I've got my Distress mica sprays and I'm gonna use this bronze color. Now this comes in a set of three and you do wanna make sure you shake those up really well. It has that really pretty mica down in the bottom. So you wanna shake it up really well. I did decide to move it from that silicone mat over to my little um, clear snap uh, color catcher box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. I just tested the spray real quickly there just to make sure it was coming out nicely. And now I'm gonna go ahead and, sp and spray this. And that's gonna give us a beautiful bronze shimmer to the front of the card here. You can see that there. That is just so pretty. So you do want to clean the nozzle on that sprayer when you're done before you put it away. And then I'm going to heat set that panel really quickly. Now I've got some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I can go ahead and pop that moon right into place here. So I'm going to close the card, place it in that circle, then I can open the card back up and then press it down and that'll position it perfectly on our card. So now I've got some clear thread and I just got this at my local craft store and I got the clear so that it won't show so it'll just like look like the bat is floating there in that circle. So I'm going to put some tape on each of these little bats and I'm using the Tombow tape runner to do that. You want a nice strong adhesive here. So now what I'm going to do is take that clear thread put it right down the center of that first bat. And I wanna leave enough at the top and the bottom so that I can place it in that circle. So you wanna cut a piece that's maybe about six inches long. Now I've glued that second bat to the back of the first one so they're connected together. Now I'm going to put a little tape at the top and the bottom of that circle. Now we can go ahead and place that thread and you wanna pull it fairly tight here. You want it to be nice and taut. And I'm going to position this bat right in the center of that circle. And I'll just, that's gluing down or taping down that thread at the very top and bottom. Now I can cut away that excess thread there. And now I can go ahead 
and attach the front panel to my card. So I'm just going to put some tape all around this. And I'm just reinforcing where that thread is just a little bit more here. And now I'm going to tape this panel to the front of the card and that should line up perfectly. So now you can see our little bat is just kind of floating inside that circle there. I'm just taking a little bit of that squeezed lemonade and going around the insides of that circle just to take that white edge away. So now I've got my little grassy border. I'm going to go ahead and tape that down to the front of the card. Now I did notice that I had a little excess along that edge, so I'm using my Tim Holtz nine and a half inch titanium shears just to trim away that excess. You could use your paper cutter here as well. Now just to take away that white edge a little bit more, I'm going back to the black soot and I'm just going to go around the edges here. So now for my little row of pumpkins, I'm going to go ahead and pop those up. I'm using the Scotch foam mounting tape to do that. And I'll just position these right on that little grassy border. So now going back to that sentiment that we talked about earlier, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. So I've got my mini Misty stamp positioner and I'm going to place that right inside there. Now you could certainly have stamped this before you attach this together, but I really wasn't sure where that was going to be. I hadn't fully decided where all my layout was going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp it now and it works out just fine. Just going to ink that up again with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'll go ahead and stamp that. So let's take a closer look at our card and what you want to do is wind this up. So I'm just twisting it and winding it up so that when the card opens up, the little bat will spin around. And here you can see that beautiful mica shimmer that we have. I just love that. And our little pumpkins are just so cute. So when you open the card, you can see that little mechanism spins around. So let me do that again here. I'm just twisting that around and around quite a few times and then when I open the card my little bat spins. So you could put a sentiment inside as well and sign inside the card. And if you enjoyed today's video please hit the like button and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always thank you so much and have a great day. Bye bye.